Welcome to the 27th session of Physics 9. This is Sir CJ, and in this session, we are going to be uh, finishing the following parts. Okay, so under Ask, we'll be uh, having an independent problem solving on problem on energy, on a problem on energy. Ayan. And then the second part, it's going to be under Ask again, we're going to be discussing potential and kinetic energy. And then the last part of this session will be an activity uh, that is on a roller coaster rides. Ayan. So uh, in this session, we are still tackling the following learning competency, and it is explaining energy transformation in various activities or events, such as in waterfalls, archery, and amusement rides, like you know the roller coaster ride. And uh, this is based on the seven E based self learning module I wrote. And uh, particularly, you're going to find this on unit number 4, book 21, pages 11 to 13. Let's dive in. Alright, so in the previous um, session, we had a guided problem solving. But this time, you're going to be working on your own. So Carissa's best friend, Crystal, also took the same food items that morning. Now, she was tasked to transfer the uh, same stack of paper in the pull cart to the office that is 10 meters away from where the pull cart initially was. Since the pull cart's handle is stuck at 25 degree angle with, uh, with respect to the horizontal since it cannot be moved anymore, she did not change it anymore. Now, she exerted 55 newtons worth of force to make this work done. Now, compute for the um, missing factors and I hope that you know how to uh, properly uh, carry out your operations. So first, start with the givens, label the givens properly, do not forget about the units of course, and then uh, the solutions, start with the uh, base form of the formula, and then uh, of course, substitute the givens, and then carry out the operations. If you need more time, you can pause this video. Are you done? Alright, now let's see. Your answer should be, Crystal used 0.0276% of the total energy from the food items she consumed. Ariane. So uh, I hope that uh, you got the correct answer. Okay, in the class, we're going to be discussing the uh, full operation on this problem. Okay, but for the meantime, uh, since this is uh, entirely um, a video lesson, if you uh, have questions, you can always approach me or, uh, you know, message me. Okay. Alright, now we're done with the first uh, part. We're gonna be uh, moving forward. The second part of this session is a discussion on potential and kinetic energy. Now think about the word potential and think about the word kinetic. I bet that you, ha already, you have already uh, heard about those terms before, right? <laughs> now as it may have been very clear, uh, objects, they have innate forms of energy. So, um you know, any kind of object or any example of object in this uh, vast universe. They always have this form of energy in them. Now, the kind of energy an object possesses, uh, at least on Earth, depends on its position, where is it on Earth, its configuration, or what makes it up, or structure, shape, and motion. Again, so, uh, these are the factors that will be affecting uh, the kind of energy that an object is going to possess. Now, if an object possesses energy because of its position or configuration, so the first uh, two words here, position or configuration or structure, and the third word, the object is said to have potential energy. Again, an object possesses energy and it could depend on its position, where it is, or configuration or structure so uh, what makes it up and its shape as well now an object put at a certain height possesses gravitational potential energy and bawa you put a stapler on the floor then the stapler possesses some kind of potential energy and it's called gravitational now if you put the stapler on the top of the table it's gonna have a slightly different potential energy but it's still gravitational now if you put the stapler on uh, on the third floor of a building 
uh, it's gonna be uh, also gonna have a different gravitational potential energy because it depends on where it is. Okay? And uh, nagbabago yung uh, pull of gravity depende kung nasan siya, gano'n siya kalayo from the uh, center of the planet. Now, an object that is stretched, so yung pwede siyang, um, kumbaga, uh, pahabain, gano'n, by pulling uh, it in two different directions, compressed, so uh, it's like you will be pushing it towards itself, making it smaller or bent, so pwede siyang, uh, you know, ma- mabaliko, gano'n. <laughs> You can basically it's it's flexible in a way that you can change its shape, and it also possesses some kind of potential energy. And in this case, it's elastic potential energy. So remember uh, that there are two kinds of potential energy that are uh, mentioned in this uh, discussion so far. There is potential energy that's gravitational, so it depends on where the uh, object is, the position. And uh, there is elastic potential energy which is depending on the configuration or structure of the object. Now, if the object possesses uh, some kind of a change in uh, position, like it's in transit, it is moving from two referen- from one reference point to another reference point, um, then that object is said to have kinetic energy. Okay, so these two, itong gravitational potential and elastic potential energy, they don't really involve any kind of movement from point A to point B. Okay, remember that motion is movement from a referen- from reference point to another reference point. Walang ganong nangyayari in uh, these two potential energies. But once, halimbawa, uh, an object is falling or an object is moving, uh, then that object is said to have kinetic energy. Now, the energy in an, in an object can be transformed from potential energy to kinetic energy and from kinetic energy to potential energy depending on its condition. For instance, when the archer in this photo pulls the string of his bow, the work is being done on the string, right? Now, there is pressure to be felt while the string is drawn because it has elastic potential energy. Meron siyang pressure because it has elastic potential energy. Now, once the string is released, it quickly goes back to its original state. Now, the movement of the string, what is it, when, once it is released, is a sign of the transformation ng kanyang elastic potential energy to its kinetic potential energy because it's, it, it moved, right? <laughs> so, when, when it was being pulled, na activate yung kanyang elastic potential energy. Na feel yun dun sa um, kamay ng archer. Now, uh, after na niyang i-release, that elastic potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy. So, kung gaano karami yung elastic potential energy na na-feel ng archer nung pinupul niya, ganun din kabilis yung magiging karami, yung um, magiging kinetic energy na, kumbaga, i-exert ng string dun sa mismong arrow. Now, in another example, say in a waterfall, uh, yung, na, yung tubig na nandito, in here, uh, that is on, you know, that is about to fall pa lang, the uh, gravitational potential energy is at maximum. Okay? Now, uh, once halimbawa, uh, the uh, water goes uh, down, I mean, and, I mean, yeah, gravitational potential energy is really high here, but the kinetic energy obviously is not. So, right at this point, the gravitational potential energy is so high, okay? Pero it is so, um, kumbaga parang, hindi naman siya volatile, pero the term I think is going to be like, um, it is so close, okay, towards transforming into a kinetic energy. Although kinetic energy at this point is zero, okay? At this point, in the uh, waterfalls, the water over here is at, uh, at a maximum greater, I mean, gravitational potential energy. But the water that is at this point uh, does not have kinetic energy. Now, as it falls and as it hits the uh, pool over here, the gravitational potential energy will be zero. And the kinetic energy naman is at maximum because it is in constant motion. So we're talking about the particles of water that are uh, here about to fall and the particles of water that are falling and uh, that fell to the pool. 
Alright. Uh, the sum of the kinetic energy, okay, halimbawa, uh, this is zero and this is ma at maximum, if you're gonna add them up, that's equal to the body's mechanical energy. Okay, so again, um, mechanical energy is a different uh, but highly related kind of energy and it is defined as the uh, sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy of a body. So before the water fell in figure number 137, yung sum ng gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy of the water must be equal to the mechanical energy of the water. Okay, and then, uh, yun nga, bale, uh, you just have to add them up, and then you're gonna get mechanical ener energy. I think that this is a really simple formula, diba? given that uh, we already survived the uh, other uh, topics like projectile motion, and I hope that uh, you get this. Okay, let us now proceed with uh, some kind of a small activity. Um, in this activity, you're gonna be uh, basing your answers. Uh, on the, uh, the previous discussion. Yung meron tayong ginamit na words na max at saka words na zero. So, uh, take a look at this uh, roller coaster track and uh, tell me the uh, what what could be the best uh, kumbaga, words we can put in these blue boxes. At this point, the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy of uh, the cart would be what? At max or zero? And if it's at max or zero, how about its kinetic energy at this point? Now, at this point of the ride, how will you describe the uh, gravitational potential energy of the cart? Is it at max or zero? Now, if it's max or zero, how about the kinetic energy? Are you done? Okay, okay. So, uh, let us now uh, try and check your work. All right. Uh, at this point, the potential energy of the cart is going to be at maximum and its kinetic energy at uh, zero. And then, at this point naman, the uh, potential energy will be zero and the kinetic energy is going to be at maximum. I hope that you got this, uh, these uh, answers. I hope that you got them correctly. Alright. We're done with the last part of the 27th session of Physics 9. And remember that in this session, we finished the following parts. Uh, first is under Ask, Problem Solving. It's an independent problem-solving activity on energy. And then the second part, we discussed uh, the different uh, types of energy, particularly potential and kinetic energy. And we even mentioned, um, you know, mechanical energy. And then uh, we uh, strengthened our understanding of the transformation of energy from potential to kinetic energy through an activity on the roller coaster ride. This is Sir CJ, and uh, in this video lesson, we tackled the following, um, or we are trying to train ourselves to be uh, better at the following learning competency. Explain energy transformation in various activities or events, such as in waterfalls, archery, and amusement rides. Uh, this video lesson is based on the 7e based self-learning module in science 9 which i wrote particularly in uh, unit 4 book number 21 pages 11 to 13. i hope that i will see you in the next video lesson